Hello and welcome back to Flexo.expert Peels. In this video peel, I'd like to talk about one of the nightmares in Flexo press rooms, scoring lines on Anilox rolls. Yes, because the purpose of the Anilox roll is to transfer a precise, uniform and regular layer of ink. If this does not happen, we will surely have defects on the final print. So, let's see where these scoring lines are coming from and how can we prevent from this annoying problem to happen. Scoring lines are originated by something that happens in the ink metering, in particular between the edge of the ductal blade and the surface of the analog roll. It may happen that some hard particles remain trapped in that point of contact and they scratch the surface of the ceramic. Excessive blade pressure and the resulting narrow contact angle and wide contact area are also key factors to be considered. The too narrow contact angle favors the so-called blade aquaplaning that lets too much ink passing under the blade and remaining on unwanted areas of anilox engraving but it also allows thin and tiny filaments of metallic material in the ink to detach from the blade tip edge and eventually be the origin of the scoring lines. Scoring lines are really an annoying problem because they result into visible printed lines on final product. Sometimes we have dark lines, sometimes we have clear lines, so let's take a little closer look and see what happens in reality. If we have any particles in the ink, they can sooner or later reach the point of contact between the ductal blade and the surface of the analog. They could pass through without creating any problem or they can create problems. The particle could be hard enough to break the edge of the blade. Of course, if I had to choose between the blade and the analog, I'd rather prefer the blade to break. It's definitely less expensive to replace a blade than an analog. So the blade will then have an indent that will allow more ink passing through and we would see a dark line in printing. Maybe the particle remained trapped for quite some time and it was hard enough to scratch the ceramic. So when we change the blade, the scratch in the analog roll will let more ink passing through, resulting in a darker line. Another case uh, is the abrasion of the ceramic on the surface of our analog roll created a larger area and when we mounted a new blade, the blade edge somewhat followed the shape of the abrasion because of pressure or because of different wear in the contact area. So wiping the ink away and resulting in a clear printed line. Particles could come from softer metals like aluminium or plastic that could remain squeezed and scraped against the ceramic. The material would clog the cells and won't go away with ordinary cleaning. So the analog engraving volume is reduced in that area and we will see a clear printed line or patches along the printing repeat. We could see horizontal scoring lines across the width and for sure they are not due to rotation in this case. They are most likely damages due to inaccurate handling, bouncing or hitting against hard bodies or press parts or maybe due to bad storage systems like this, where the analog rolls are sliding in and out and their surface rubs against the inner surface of those supposed protections. Of course, the characteristics of the ceramic that is used for manufacturing our analog rolls is very important. It's always a good idea to consult with your supplier and possibly compare the parameters related to hardness, porosity, inclusion of impurities and uh, avoid to have long-term contact with chemistry like cleaning products or inks having pH below 4 or pH above 10 because they could seriously damage the ceramic coating. 
A good cleaning of the ink unit and the wall machine is essential, not only for correct color reproduction. Any dry residues of brittle and worn components could potentially release particles that can enter the ink flow and produce Anilux scoring. Consider installing adequate filters and magnets in the ink flow to intercept and capture those very risky particles and also take a look at ductor blades made of non-metallic materials. I hope this video was useful for you and don't forget to take your basic training in flexography on flexor.training and if you need more advanced or customized training you're welcome to contact me at any time. Ciao!